Welcome to Grow and Give, a modern victory garden project from Colorado State University Extension. We're here to help you learn to grow food for yourself, your family, your neighbors, and your community. Share the harvest, keep it local. Insect pests of vegetable gardens, tomato hornworms and tobacco hornworms. The first part of the season that a gardener will run across a hornworm is usually when they're turning the soil in spring and getting it ready for planting. Very often, they dig up the pupil case of the overwintering hornworm, like you see here on the lower right side. That person is holding the rather large, long pupil case that houses the sphinx moth that is the adult form of the hornworm inside it. Sometimes kids get a little kick out of playing with this pupil case because the first time or two that you that you touch it, it will wiggle a little bit to let you know that moth is still inside. Don't let them play too long with it because you could exhaust the poor moth. Just go ahead and set it back into the soil if the hornworms are something that you don't mind having around. Plenty of people don't mind having them around because the adults are these sphinx moths that are rather large and the way they fly and feed on flowers, they're often referred to as hummingbird moths, which is also a neat addition to our gardens. What's not so neat are the larvae themselves because they feed primarily on our tomato plants. They like them more than we do even because they'll be eating the stems and the leaves before they're getting big enough to go after the fruit itself. Very often a gardener will not even notice these caterpillars as they blend in really well with the tomato itself. What you notice first are the huge elephantine sized droppings that they leave below them. And you kind of look up on the plant and all of a sudden you see this really large muscular caterpillar with a horn on the back end. That horn is not something they use for defense. Rather, it's a type of camouflage that will fool, fool birds into thinking that's the front end of the caterpillar. Regardless, they are feeding on our tomato plants and um, they do so with a certain amount of enthusiasm. The adults will emerge in late spring and they will fly around and then lay eggs that most of the time gardeners don't notice. The egg is laid singly and it's a small pearl shaped egg. And the tiny larvae that hatch, the caterpillars, will do a little bit of feeding. But it's as the caterpillars size up that the damage becomes really obvious. Control of the tomato hornworm is pretty simple. They're a pretty big insect. You're definitely going to see them. So what you could do is simply pick them off and toss them far away from the tomato plants. Chances are they're not gonna be able to crawl back. If you have chickens or ducks, they love feeding on these. So you could simply hand pick these and feed them to those birds. Some people, when they've run across the hornworm out there, will simply cut them in half with their scissors. I'm gonna leave that up to people that have a little bit stronger stomach than I do. Otherwise, you can use a product known as Bacillus thuringiensis or BT as gardeners like to refer to it. BT is a soil bacterium that is pretty specific to which type of insect it'll go after. So the strain you're looking for is Kerstaki. Kerstaki is good on a variety of caterpillars that are the larva of uh, butterflies or moths. So if you wanted to use an organic control for trying to control hornworms, then BT or stocky is a great choice. Learn more, grow more. Contact your local CSU Extension office.